What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving back into Trials of Fire. This game, we covered it about a year ago, I think, and it was in early access at that point. It's coming out in 1.0 on Friday, and it's a pretty cool little RPG. Like, it's got a lot of moving parts and things that it does a little bit different. So it's a game that takes place on a hex grid. Uh, the characters have cards that stand for their abilities and whatnot, but you can kind of trade the cards in to do interesting things. And at the same time, it's also got kind of like an RPG storybook element on like a world map where you're trying to accomplish a great quest that sort of ties the whole thing together. And honestly, that works for me. Uh, I think there's been like a lot, a lot, a lot of card games lately, and they all tend to be kind of barking up that same Slay the Spire tree. And so, like, I don't have a problem with card games, it's just that I have a problem with card games that are trying to be Slay the Spire when Slay the Spire already exists. And so, like, when I find a card game that is not, like, blatantly trying to be Slay the Spire and is sort of going its own way, I'm more than happy to give it a shot, and that's, I think, where Trials of Fire lands. So anyways, let's dive on in. We're gonna spend about 30 minutes with the game, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after doing that you want to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below. Uh, there will also be links to my Discord, my Twitch stream, and my Twitter, all of which are fun places that I would love to be your host, but let's dive on in and create an adventure. Uh, so we've got different quests here that we can check on out, and I'm pretty sure the Trial of Fire, that's how I'm going to say it every single time that it comes up, uh, is the only one that we have available at the moment. And so anyways, we've got to rescue abducted companions and hunt down a wrathful deity. Oh, we're going to be killing a god. That's pretty cool. That's always a good way to sell copy. Good. I guess we actually we can pick between these. So this is randomly generated every single time. Whereas this one right here is actually to, I guess, unlock further lore maybe. And like unlock new things that you can do. We've also got seasonal challenges and a daily challenge here. Maybe we'll just go for the default trial of fire then. Sounds like a decent plan. we got three characters ready to rock. We've got a hunter named Rastin. Apparently he's got a spear. And he's also got himself some armor. Uh, we've got the Elementalist Malkin. It looks like she's got herself a staff that belches flame all over the place. It's just a firework on a stick, dude. It's legitimately just like a government-approved firework on a stick. Don't even worry about it. It's not even the good fireworks, man. It's not even the fun stuff that you buy under a bridge. It's the stuff that you get from those huts that are all along the 12. Anyways, she's got some cloth rags on. This dude has bone armor. Defend two after performing a melee attack. Okay, and then we've got a bone sword. So it looks like it's a double strike right there that you get out of that. That sounds pretty cool. We've got it on standard length. Let's begin our journey. The settlement of Terra Lynn is dying. You must track down the settlement's leader, Naya, who has ventured out into the grasslands in search of a powerful artifact that is not and has not been heard from for weeks. Okay. So here we are. We've got ourselves an overworld map. We've got a few resources that we got to keep an eye on. we got food supply over here. So it looks like when we camp, it will recover our fatigue. We are fresh right now as far as our fatigue goes. And then it looks like we can drag that onto an individual to give them health back directly. We also have morale. I don't know if the morale is going to... Apparently it increases our magic find, so that's pretty cool, but I don't know if it's going to dip based on like how much damage we take, or if we take losses. We got mystic herbs that allow us to meditate. Spoiler alert, it's Mary Jane. Uh, if you suffered an injury, you can use two herbs while resting to heal it. And then we've got 50 coins of obsidian. Sounds good. And there's a little question mark thing down here. Is that like a city right there? It's a settlement? Okay, so we've got to go up and to the left. We're right next to that little icon right there, but I'm going to travel this way across the rockiest of rocks to see if maybe we can, like, get something done over here. Looks like there's a settlement on this side. I think what we should do is we should hit these little question marks, and then we can double back to the settlement to grab the things that we need. Was this, like, a ruin? On your left, a long rocky ridge comes into view that rises from the sands. Looking closer, you see a man-made structure with a large, rectangular door-like opening at ground level beneath the summit. Uh, let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's approach from the front. Before you get closer to the opening, there's a battle cry that increases markedly in volume. Echoing around the inside of the fortress ahead, several charred emerge from the opening. Everybody knows that charred is the worst vegetable ever. It makes sense that the charred would be militant. It's just always living in lettuce's shadow. Alright, so this is how combat takes place. We're on a little hex grid right here. We can move around by discarding cards. We can actually move. So I guess it's got like a little bit of an influence of like Gloomhaven there too. Except that cards are not like permanently burned. Uh, we've got to fight what look like a couple of goblinos over here. I'd like to get my hunter. And I'd like to get my warrior into similar positions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this advanced card right here to move the warrior to right there. 
Did you get an advance card? No. Advance allows us to move. So let's actually talk about the UI first before I go any further, because I don't want to confuse anybody. I have this tendency to get ahead of myself and start like playing games that I'm familiar with without like explaining anything, and I'm trying to break the habit, okay? Uh, up at the top, we've got our recycling shrine. The little number on it is how much energy we have. Cards cost that much energy to play. We can right-click on any of these cards, and it will discard it. By discarding a card, we can either move, uh, we can bank a little bit of energy, and then there's another thing we can do, but we'll talk about that at the end of the turn because it's not like crazy relative. It's not crazy relevant right now. I'm gonna move this guy up to here to protect our wizard. Uh, do we have any powers that we can play for right now? Every time you play a card that deals melee damage, gain one willpower. It's not really on the person that I want it to be. Oh, never mind. That's on my warrior. Okay, so we can play that right now, but it's going to cost us two. So I'll discard that for some energy, and that's a power. That's going to be active for the rest of combat, so you don't really need to worry about it. Over here, we've got another power to gain one willpower at the start of our turn. So I'll do that because that gives us a freebie to play around with so that we don't have to fiddle with stuff. We also have another power right here called Cantrip. Every time you play a card that deals magical damage, gain a willpower. So that's effectively the magic damage corollary to what we just played on her. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and discard Force Missile real fast, and then we'll play Cantrip right there. And then I'm going to show you this other mechanic, because there's not really much else that we can do for right now anyways. Actually, he can make that shot right there. It's okay, I can't get the energy up anyways. So what we can do is if we discard our cards right there, you see this little plus two that shows up? When you discard a card that's assigned to a certain character, and you don't use the energy that is generated by that card, if you end your turn, you will gain as much defense as is indicated on the character. Hopefully that wasn't super confusing when I explained it, but like... That's basically the way that it works. So they're moving on up, moving on up, to fight with me. All right, so we've got a force missile over here. I think we should fire off the force missile. That's what I think. So there you go, force missile. I actually really, really like the spell effects in this game, and I also like the overall presentation. Uh, I would like for you to move right to here. That sounds like a really, really good plan. We've got two energy to play around with. I'm going to go with a swipe right here. I've just There's a tutorial pop-up. I had to get it out of the way. I was about to explain the exact same thing that the tutorial pop-up was about to explain. So effectively, we have combo attacks. So if you have somebody that's adjacent to you and also adjacent to an enemy that you're attacking, they jump in on it. We fight without honor around here. and We're all about stomp outs and jumpings. And so that's exactly what happens. I'm going to go with a double strike right here. And as you can see, he jumped in on each of those individual attacks. That means that anything that deals like two damage four times or like one damage four times is actually elevated a lot if you have somebody with that adjacency bonus that's ready to throw off that combo attack right there. So you really do sort of want to pay attention to your positioning, which, you know... That's going to be an extra aspect that I think attempts to pull this game away from the non-positional gameplay of, like, Slay the Spire. Which, frankly, it sucks all the oxygen out of the room. It's a game that sort of dominates the conversation when it comes to cards. And so, like, it's kind of tough to get away from. Uh, does he have any kind of movement or anything? He's got focus. Every time you play a card that deals range damage, gain a willpower. Improvised attack. So it can be melee 4 or range 3. Yeah, let's go range three. Strip a little bit of armor off that dude right now. Uh, we do have advance right here. I would suggest advancing to right there just to get the free energy back. Uh, we can go with preparation. That's good. I'll throw that on there so that we can get that bonus energy. We've got focus over here. Yeah, I'll try to get my powers up and running. I think that's not too bad of a play. We'll stop off right there. We're probably going to take a little bit of attrition on this front side just from this gobbo right here. Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to take like a little tiny bit of damage, but I think we're in an okay position to get this done. So we have energy for right now. That's going to deal five damage. I think it's a really smart decision to throw that on out there and sort of secure this flank so that we're not fighting in multiple directions. Uh, I moved her there for a reason. She can use Unstable Blast to deal magic damage. She's also got a swipe available. You've got defensive after performing a melee attack. Probably a good idea. A couple of wild swings on in here, but they're expensive. They're real expensive. Okay, uh, let's have you advance down to here. And my hope is that... Yeah, we can take that guy out right now. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to get defensive stance running on her so that she's got that power active. On top of that, we're going to need her to sort of like block. And so I'm going to discard everything else and just wait for this guy to close the gap. And hopefully we don't take any damage right here. Uh, because damage is preserved 
in between combats. That's what the camping interface is for, is to like kind of fix yourself up. We've got a arcane blast right there. That'll strip the armor. Sounds good. We've got an advance over there for a free energy. The flame fan can go to right there. I love the spell effects. They just look absolutely fantastic. He's now got a burn on him, so he's going to take two damage at the end of his turn, so that's good. I need... You're already in position. I need you to be right there so that we're capitalizing on combo attacks. We're going to throw that out right there. And then on top of that, we're going to finish him off with a swipe. Perfect. Uh, I think the combat probably couldn't have gone better except for that one damage that we took over here. But if we hadn't taken that one, I think flawless. But still, I'm fairly happy with it considering I haven't played the game in a really, really long time. Searching the charred settlement you find inside the opening, you find several useful items and the meat of indeterminate origin. It tastes okay. So we can level up a character here. I'm going to level up the tank first. Uh, by leveling up, we're going to gain access to new things that we can kind of add on in, or we can choose just not to take a card. Uh, melee attack 2, defend 2 is pretty good. I like that. Anything that generates damage and also defensive capability is something that I would love to prioritize on top of a tank. We can move 3 and then put weakened on adjacent enemies. We've got goad. All attacks deal plus 1 damage per adjacent enemy. We've also got hamstring. Move the target, melee attack 3, and then immobilize them. I'm going to take Measured Blow. Measured Blow seems like a, a good thing to take. We've also got ourselves the Spear over here. We got 20 coins, and then we've got a little bit of food to make up for the fact that, you know, we took a little bit of damage. Uh, other things that we can look at, we're not really that tired as of right now, so I think we can continue. There's another town right there. I'm going to go for the Ruins first, and then we'll go for the town. All right, so in the remains of a human town, you spot a peculiar sight. There's a lonely rattling overloading a pack lizard with dozens of tattered human garments. Uh, yeah, I can escort you back to the, the, the town. The rattling thanks you and quickly finishes strapping up her curious horde before leading you out of town and pointing in the direction of her home. Do you know the rattling town, the rattling town, the rattling town? All right, so the party's been traveling nonstop. It'd be a good time to rest. I don't want to rest. No! All right, it's forcing me to rest right now. Uh, although your mission is urgent, you just stop to rest and recover health and stamina. Each time you rest, your party will consume a unit of food. Oh, that's not that bad. I thought it was going to take like one per, so that's okay. Uh, is it going to force me to take this rest right now? Oh, we're already in here. Okay, so we can just rest. We can upgrade an item. Using crafting materials, we can meditate, heal injuries. Yeah, let's just rest for a minute. That's fine. All right, let's break camp real quick. And then this quest is going up and to the left this way. All right. Let's see if we can get on over there. I would love to help this little dude out. Let's do the quest first, and then we'll worry about, like, extra objectives after we help him. Uh, you reach the hometown of your rattling companion. Your guide takes you inside and introduces you to a partner who is busy carving up the carcass of one of the couple's lizards. Okay, uh, let's level up the wizard next, I guess. I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. Between these two, I don't really mind who we level up. We've got an Ice Lance right there. It puts Chilled on enemies that lowers their movement. Okay, and deals some damage. We've got Stone Barrier. That puts Defend 4 on any character, and it's free. It's pretty good. Earth Grab. We can immobilize and defend 2 to all characters in the area. So we can actually use that offensively or defensively. So that's actually not a terrible idea if we need some AoE cover and we're not planning on moving anytime soon. We've also got Overload. After you play a card that deals magic damage, all future attacks deal plus two. Less, plus two from the damage bonus each round. I think I'm going to go with Stone Barrier because it's free, simply based on the fact that, like, it doesn't cost me anything. I'll probably use it to replace one of the melees. She doesn't strike me as a character who's going to be using a lot of melees, so, you know. You reach the hometown, and it looks like we've completed the side quest. Our reward was food. Good, because that's what it cost us to get up here. They give us dried lizard jerky. Mm-mm-mm. Don't you just love that lizard jerky? I can't remember the last time I had a good lizard jerky. Uh, the Rattling Tailor bids you farewell and points you in the direction of a local trader who will treat you fairly. Okay, so we've got 79 bucks right now. I don't think that we need food. A cracked short bow is kind of cool. It's range attack 2, deal double damage if the target is immobilized or is not adjacent to any other obstacle. Okay, so if they're in a wide open field. We've got a sturdy bone over here that's crafting materials, so all the gear on our characters, when you saw it on the camping menu, we can use stuff like wood and bones and metal and stuff like that in order to upgrade our gear. Although I don't think metal exists in this game world, actually, or like it's like super rare or something like that. Like I'm pretty sure in this game world they use like stone and obsidian for everything because like metal is not available but honestly, I haven't deep dove into the lore enough to tell you. 
So two potential options that I see here for purchases. We have a Burned Arcanist manual. That'll actually increase the damage output of our mage by quite a lot. Four damage and then pushing targets in random directions is pretty cool. Uh, we also have the Padded Rags over here, which makes us have an ability called Stock. What Stock is going to do is it makes it so we no longer have to line fight. Uh, you get the combo regardless. You don't need adjacency, and I think I said you did earlier on. But anyways, if multiple people are adjacent to the same enemy, you get combo attacks. This gives us plus two damage to our combo strike, so instead of one, it'll deal three if you were not adjacent to any friendly characters. And I think that's actually a pretty cool item to be used on one of our melees so that we can kind of wheel and deal a little bit harder. Uh, let's go ahead and I'd like to take a look at his character sheet. Absolutely love the character art and the characterization. They all look very rough, they all look very ragged, but they all look very, very badass. Like, I really, really like the character design here. Especially that of, like, the warrior. But as you can see, not a whole lot of metal around. I'm pretty sure those are, like, bone chunks right there. Uh, for you. So you've got the padded rags. I do like willpower a lot, but I think we're going to go with that for right now and swap it on out. You do have a, uh, a finite amount of spaces for cards. So you have like equipment cards, and then you also have... Can he dual wield a spear? I was going to say, it says that he can have a weapon right there, but like I don't know exactly what goes into that. We can have either a bracer or a shield right there. Okay, sounds good. Well, let's take it back to the map, and let's see if we can get into more trouble here. You enter an ancient living world castle teetering over the edge of a blasted hill. A quick inspection of the courtyard uncovers an armory hanging over the edge of a drop. So we'll take some health damage, we might get an injury, but we get a reward. The injuries are like permanent, so I'd really rather not mess with those. Like, injuries are effectively like a debuff that stays on your character uh, until you spend a lot of resources getting rid of them. So for all intents and purposes, they're kind of permanent, and I'd rather not play with it. Uh, this is a trader over here, but we can't afford anything, so I think we're going to move on. Malkin is confronted by a dirty human, possibly in her teens. She is desperate for food and claims that she and her father, a hunter, recently discovered an unlooted elven temple in a nearby forest. As much as I do love robbing elves, unfortunately, I don't have any money to pay for it. She pleads, but she realizes you're not going to bite. She regains, regains her composure and moves off into the crowd looking for someone else. She doesn't seem that broken up as when you first met. Yeah, it's kind of what I figured. She's out here hustling. She's out here getting it. All right. A rattling Fletcher is testing out a number of different lodestone arrows on two targets 10 feet apart. I could try to take her out with a well-placed arrow. That seems kind of mean. The rattling's not bothering anybody. Let's see here. She's not averse to the idea of doing business, but wants a sum for the obsidian arrows. Oh, we can hire her to be like a party member, too, or like a follower, so she can kind of be like an aide de camp. That's kind of cool. And we can agree we get food for that right there. I don't really have any money. I'm kind of poor. Like, I'm taking these events, trying to get some monies. But, unfortunately, kind of is what it is. Uh, we'll go ahead and rest for right now. Get our energy back up. It looks like there's actually diminishing returns on it, too. All right, we'll break camp for right now. Let's go see what this thing is. What is this right here? It looks fancy and important. You enter the ruins of a wealthy-looking living world town. Before you have time to search the place, you're confronted by a large armed band of ratlings who claim the place is their own. We can challenge the elite group, or we can try to negotiate to split the looting. Let's try that. The rattling leader stubbornly refuses any offer of sharing loot. It becomes clear this is going nowhere, so you back off. I don't want to back off. I wanted to offer cooperation and then murder them if they didn't meet me halfway. You see how that works right there? Like, I was definitely, like, I was in the progress. Like, I, I had, you know, decisions that I was trying to make. Uh, let's see here. Malkin spots a group of hybrid who are busy rebuilding a handful of buildings. An armed band comes towards you and demands that the party leave the area. Mm, do I want to rob them? I'm kind of a good guy when I play video games. I always feel bad. Like, are you the kind of player that when you make a decision in a video game, it actually, like bothers you being a terrible person like like the video game is actually real like that happens to me all the time like you know I, I will present as being like edgy and like out there for a joke but like when I play a video game I like always very carefully pick all the good options all the altruistic options I try to be a nice guy like man I am very much that player type and frankly I it, I've been playing Disco Elysium lately and it's really hard to play Disco Elysium that way I'll be honest with you I'm gonna be a nice guy I had to make an edit right there because I made a sneeze I made a sneeze up out my schnoz. Uh, we are officially tired at this point, but that's where the lady was at that we're looking for. 
So I will consider resting. Yeah, let's like rest it on up real fast. Just a little bit of resty time and then hopefully we'll get some food pretty soon. You come across what must be the ruin that Naya described in her writings. Malkin notices a huge spined creature moving through the rubble. You approach cautiously, hoping to avoid confrontation with the massive beast. You quickly lose sight of the creature within the rubble, and you get the feeling that you've become prey. Without a warning, the huge spike back drops down from above, trying to pin Jara to the ground with a razor-sharp leg. Uh-uh, don't do that. Don't pin me down with the leggy. Oh, it's got 30 HPs. That's terrifying. Okay, all right, fair enough. Apparently, it has special abilities that are always active. They get bonus willpower at the start of every turn, and then their powers on the boss start with extra resilience. It means they can take more damage before the powers are discarded. I actually didn't know that it could be discarded. So there you go. I learned a new thing today. Uh, let's go ahead, and I'm going to trade in the advance in order to get that up and running. We've got focus over here. I'm going to go ahead and discard those so I can put on focus. I've got advance on that side. I'm going to put the warrior out front real quick. I'd like to get... So he's kind of like pinned in. He's got that he's got that armor. I'd kind of like to get him to a spot where he'll be around behind getting bonuses from the combo attacks. That's what I would very much appreciate first. Let's go ahead and move her back a little bit too just to keep her safe. Oh. My man's got ranged attacks. Okay, so we're going to have to push up then. We don't have much of a choice there. Uh, you get in behind there, come in over here. You've got improvised attack, so we're going to throw that out just to deal some damage because we got nothing else going on for us. Uh, I'm going to have to play around with... So that's going to be limited in range. Yeah, let's go ahead and move up, I guess. I don't know if I want to force adjacency just yet. But... Yeah, let's not force the adjacency. Let's kind of like see what happens here. Ow, no, my wizard! That was not what I wanted to happen at all. Okay. My wizard is getting absolutely smashed right now. Just unbelievably buried. Oh my god. Did it just OTK my wizard, dude? That sucks. That sucks hard. Alright, well, power shot over here. We've got the damage to go out for it. Put on stock. Throw out improvised attack for a little bit more damage. Uh, you advance up and lock that person. Apparently we had to force adjacency. You can't use ranged attacks if you have somebody adjacent to you uh, that's an enemy. So anyways, that's where we ran into trouble right there. Uh, who knows what this thing is going to do, though, on its turn, because it just smashed my wizard all in one turn, like a singular turn. To be fair, I didn't know what the abilities the enemy had was, so like, there we go. So we've got our redraws. Every time we throw out a card, it puts little pips underneath here, and basically you've got to get enough to kind of get to the number that it wants, and then you can redraw your hand. Uh, but anyways... What do I want to do now? I think we should probably go power shot right there. I, I think that's fairly undeniable. We'll throw out a little bit more damage on that side. I am of the opinion that we'll maybe get rid of that. We'll move you up to here. We'll throw in defensive stance, and then we'll go with measured blow on that side. Like, I think we can finish this fight off. I We just kind of had the unfortunate consequence of watching our wizard get absolutely reduced to kibble, which I would have really preferred to have not had that happen. But that's life, I guess. Defensive stance just fell off. It just got knocked off of us by damage, so that's a bit of a bummer. I do have a power shot right here that will strip five armor off that person. Uh, I'm going to use advance to move up to here. We've got strike through. So I'll throw that out to you just for a little bit of supplemental damage. We've got that right there, and then we've got Exhausted on that side. I'm going to discard it to get the extra energy. And then we go for a double strike right there, but i got a bad feeling she's going to go down on this turn. That's just the feeling that I've got. Unfortunately, I don't really have any redraws left either. Yeah. All right, well, throw the damage out there.
We did force the AI to use a card moving, so that's a good sign. Uh, this game doesn't have a tax of opportunity because it costs you resources Gloomhaven style in order to move. And, and so, like, you're giving up an option whenever you use a card to move effectively. And so, like, I think that's a pretty good compromise. I, I think that's a compromise that I'm okay with. Uh, we've got line of sight blocked right there, so I'm going to have to use advancement to kind of get around this way. And then we should be able to improvise the attack right there and bring it on down. But that was a hell of a monster, wasn't it? That thing had some serious attacks to it. And I can't rest right now, so that's a problem. Malkin has been injured, so there's a minor injury right there, but we can recycle it. So at least it's extra energy. Uh, we picked up a legendary item. That's pretty cool. So we've got White Death. So it adds cards here. It can be used either by our Ranger or it can be used by our Mage. It gives us a Frost Bolt. It can give us a Stab. It can give us a Critical Strike. Okay. We've got Armor. Glass Plating. It gives you five armor. We get Shield Wall. If you would lose defense at the start of your turn, this power loses one Resilience instead. Okay, resilience is the number in green. That's how much damage you have to take for the power to fall off and basically lose your concentration and stop channeling it. It also has battle stance. Uh, attacks deal plus two damage on play. Defend four. Okay. Not bad. It's expensive, but it's good. Uh, impenetrable wall. Whenever you gain defense this turn, gain the same amount again. That is also spicy. Uh, we've got Nebula's Star, which will give us four willpower. It's energy generation, which is always pretty important. Meditation, gain two willpower at the start of your turn. This card costs one less willpower to play for every power that's still active. Okay. And then channeling, we can gain six willpower. Gotcha. We've also got the Soul Gem, and it's a crafting material. I am of the opinion that I like the glass plating the best. That's what, that's what Splatty likes the best. We've also got some hand wraps over here. It's going to give you might. Your attacks deal bonus damage equal to the cost of previous non-move cards played. Okay, fair enough. we got a little bit of money right there, which I'm definitely thankful for. And then we've got some Mithril Dust. I'll take it all. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll level up our final character. He can take Pinning Shot right there and immobilize enemies. He's got coverage. Actually, I think Immobilize would have been strong on that last fight because I think a lot of the damage was called things like Running Shot or whatever. And so I think a lot of the enemy boss's damage was predicated on the ability to stay mobile. And so, actually, I think that might have been helpful. We've got Take Aim. All attacks on a single target deal bonus damage equal to the resilience of this power. After attacking, it loses one resilience. Okay. we got Power Shot over here. So, our Cover Shot. Sorry. So, if we fire from Cover, we get Defend 4 on top of 3 damage. I think that's pretty good. We've got Pinning Shot and Flare. All right. Well, I like Pinning Shot and I like Cover Shot. Oh no, dude, we've run out of time. Well, this is Trial of Fire. I hope you guys liked it. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Check it out down below in the description. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and hopefully I've done a good job at justifying your attentions today. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet.